Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we are going to design a fab interaction. Fab, which is also known as floating action button, was popularized by Google's material design. And now it has become a really common interaction pattern across all the modern day apps. Apps like Gmail and Twitter, all of them have like a floating action button and can do various interactions. Uh, fab can be associated with a lot of other interactions, but in today's video, we're just gonna explore one of such possibilities. It's a very simple interaction that can add a lot of character in your entire prototype. So let's see how can we design this in Figma and let's get started. So we are right now in Figma and I have already set up a few things as usual. So let me just walk you through what are the assets that you will need to do this interaction. So we first of all have an app screen and this UI, I built it in one of my previous videos, so you can check it out as well, but we are not gonna animate this entire thing. So this is an app screen, and this basically is an app for travel where it, you can read travel articles, you can find travel documents, okay? And uh, the interaction that we wanna build in this is that if you find anything that is related to your travel, you can save it into your wish list. So wishlisting a travel document or a travel destination is the primary action of this app. So in this, first of all, you will have an app screen and uh, this app screen contains a screen, some text, some icons, right? We're not going to animate that. The second important part that we have in this app is this floating action button in the bottom right. Uh, it's called fab. I have written it down here, floating action button, and it has three components. Let me quickly show you what are those. So first of all, this component has a bag, uh, a background. So it has a black background and I have given drop shadow to it. So these are the values for the drop shadow. So it's a little diffuse shadow around that black background. Then I have a background on top of it, the same circular background, but in white color. Currently I've given it a zero pass through. Let me show you how it looks like. So we have a white background and I have given it a zero pass through because we want to animate it. So for now it will be zero. And here's a simple pro tip. Uh, if you are trying to animate something and it involves changing in the opacity, then I would recommend you to change the pass through value for it rather than changing the fill value. So if you, you can also change the uh, opacity by changing the opacity of the fill, but don't do that because it messes up the entire interaction. So a very simple way involving opacity animations will be to just change the pass throughs. And I'll explain why do we need this layer again in the interaction, but we do need to have it. So we have a background which is black and has a shadow then we have another layer on top of it, which is exactly the same size, but, but with white fill and zero pass through. And then on top of it, we have an add icon or a plus icon, right? And I've combined all of these together into a frame. Okay. So that constitutes our floating action button. The other thing that you will need in this interaction are these sort of cards. So they're nothing, just a simple card. I've componentized it. It contains an image, a text, and what are the total number of items that is saved in that quest list, okay? So these are the two assets that we need. And now let's quickly get started with our interaction. So we're in Figma right now, and I've already given you the walkthrough of this entire thing. Uh, by the way, we are using an iPhone 11 Pro Max artboard, and we have the app screen here, which we are not gonna animate. What we are going to animate is this floating action button, which I've already shown you what are the constituents of this button is, okay? So the first thing that we need to do is I'll come here and I'll select the artboard and I'll duplicate it. I'll just hit Alt on my, or Option key on my keyboard and uh, I'll just drag it out and it'll create a copy for me, okay? So we have app one and then there's a copy, which is basically app two. I'll just rename it as well immediately so that we don't have any confusion. Cool. Uh, so what we want is when we click on this fab button, uh, this black color should fill the entire space on the screen and then this plus icon should also animate into a cross icon so let me show you how to do that what i'll do is i'll just move it a little bit apart yeah like this i'll come here and i'll select the fab bg which is basically the black background okay and what i'll do is i'll hit k on my keyboard to enable my scale tool and this is a double headed arrow if you see and what i'll do is i'll just make the circle bigger so let me just drag it out and make it like really big so that fills the entire space. I'll move it around a little bit more, scale it a bit so that fills the entire thing. Okay, great. 
So if you see, um, now I've made the circle big enough so that fills the entire artboard and now it looks black, okay? So that's the major part of our interaction actually. The second thing that we need to do is, uh, if you remember this second layer of uh, background which I have given a zero pass through, I want to give it something like a 30% pass through. And the reason to add this pass through was to give this button more prominence because this plus icon will be in animating as well. So this white, this light white background gives it a really nice uh, touch and drags more attention towards it that this is how we can close it as well. Okay. So this is a white filled thing, white filled circle with a 30% uh, pass through. Okay. Great. So I think two things are done. Third thing that we need to do is I'll select the plus icon that you see here and give it an angle of 45 degree. And as soon as you give it an angle of 45 degree, the plus turns into a cross, okay? So when we link these two screens together, we'll get a really nice animation out of it, okay? So now I think most of the thing is done. Let's quickly wire this up and see how it looks like. So what I'll do is I'll select, go in my prototyping tab, and I'll select this, um, what do you say, uh, this floating action button in the first screen, and I'll drag and drag it to the next artboard. So on tap, navigate to app two, which is the second artboard, smart animate, ease out and 300 milliseconds. I think this is perfect. And what I also want to do is that when I hit this close button, I should go back to the previous stage. So I'll select the fab in this second stage. I'll drag an option, I mean, I drag my arrow and drag it to the first artboard. So on tap, navigate to app one, smart animate, ease out and 300 millisecond is the total duration of the time. Now let's quickly see how it looks like in our prototyping window. So uh, our screen is here and we have our floating button here. And if I hit plus, you see it's nicely, really nicely expanding. And if I hit again, it collapsing it again, right? So if I hit, it just expands and it comes back again in the same way. So it gives a very nice touch. Now just notice the uh, plus icon. I'm just gonna move my cursor a little bit up so that you can see it. Uh, see the action or the, the movement of the plus icon. So if you see, it's really nicely turning into left and changing into a cross. And if I close it again, it's turning into the plus again. So overall, this is giving a really nice floating action button interaction, which is like a full screen one. And you can use it for um, adding more, what do you say, attention to one particular screen, which requires more attention from the user, okay? So now we're done with these two things. Let's quickly add other elements on the screen and finish this prototype, okay? So what next I want to do is I want this screen that you're seeing here, which will come after uh, selecting this plus icon, is that it should open a wishlist screen where I can wishlist this particular article, the first one that you're seeing, uh, into one of my already created wishlists, okay? So what, to do that, what I'll do is I'll select my app to uh, artboard and I'll again duplicate it, okay? And let's call it app three, okay? And the first thing that I want to do is I want to add uh, a text. So let me add a text. Move it a bit down. This is fine. Okay. So we have saved to wishlist text here. Now what I want to do is I want to add my cards that I shown you in the first go. So I have the cards here. I'll just select all of these and command C and paste it here. Okay. On top of everything else. I think I'll keep it here. Save to wishlist, I need to move a little bit up. So I'll just move it a little bit up. Okay. Move it a little bit down. And then have it a little bit down. Okay, perfect. So this is the screen uh, that will appear once you move to this black screen, okay? Now, there's a reason why I haven't added these cards to the second screen itself because there's an animation, the circle is expanding. If I add this, then they will start appearing on top of the circle and that animation will just get ruined, okay? That's why we need to add it to our next screen. And what I'll also want to do is this transfer from here to here should happen automatically. So let's go in our prototyping tab. And what I'll do is I'll select the entire artboard, the second artboard, and I'll drag an element to the third artboard. And we don't want on tap, we want it to do after delay because we want to move it to the screen automatically. And let's do some 800 milliseconds because that will be enough time for this animation to end and then to move this one. Okay. And uh, 
yeah i think the animation that will be having is smart animate is out in 300 milliseconds so i think this is also done let's quickly see how it looks like um i'll hit the play icon so we have hit the play button plus button click and you see yeah so it expands and then only you'll see this elements okay let me just show it again but 800 millisecond is i think too much longer of a time so i'll just go in my prototyping tab select the after delay and 800 millisecond is very high i think so what i'll do is i'll just do something like 500 milliseconds now let's see how it looks like yeah i think it's still smaller so what i'll do is i'll just make it 300 milliseconds only the exact time that the previous interaction ends let's do it again let's see how it looks like yeah now this looks perfect right close it back yeah so this looks really nice the entire animation finishes and then you see something happening okay so i think this looks really good um what i have also done is i have just i think this is done for uh today's video i think guys this is the primary interaction that i wanted to build uh what i've also done is that uh, on clicking on this so any of the card it shows you a small toast so let me show that extension as well i'm not going to explain how i'm i mean it's a very simple thing so let me quickly show that extension as well so what i've done is uh, i've added this small snack bar which is a confirmation so what will happen is if i click on any of these cards it go back to the first screen but also shows this add it to wish list uh, snack bar and then from here to the next screen i have automatically did the after delay and after delay this smart animate these values i'm just moving this uh, snack bar down so if i show you here and if i don't do clip content if you see i'm just moving it down so from here to here it automatically comes and then this snack bar goes down so this is an extension don't worry i will be putting up this file um, in figma community and you can just check it out but let me show you how this extension looks like and this makes things a little bit more better okay so the our primary interaction was done which i've shown you from here to here and then this is the add additional thing that i have added so let me quickly show you this as well so that you know uh, what exactly you can do and how can you add finishing touches and you can go to the figma community file and check it out by yourself how i did the other thing so the plus icon is here i'll click on it everything appears right and if i select one of the cards i'll get a snack bar and that snack bar goes away automatically let's see one more time screen selection add it to wish list one more time I come here and i don't do anything i'll just hit the back or the cross one and goes back to the same screen so this is the interaction guys this is the really simple interaction that you can build with a uh, floating action button in my next video i'll also explain how to do other interactions as well where you can click and it also uh, changes into multiple other buttons so those are the other primary use cases of fab but i'll show that in the next video and i think this is for it you can use this interaction really simply for uh, screens that requires more attention or it's the most prominent action on your entire app so you can use this interaction for that and i think that's it for today i hope you like this video uh, if you like this video thumbs up and uh, if not just let me know in the comments and yeah if you like this video do subscribe to the channel i'm putting up videos every week and you can also join our discord community that will be in the description so that's it uh, take care bye bye and i'll see you in my next video